Okay, so this is the proper first example from the um, projectiles gap notes. I've drawn a little bit of a diagram to get me started. So this is my cliff, if you like, 30 meters above. This is the angle of 20 degrees it's projected. That's the 8 meters per second. Uh, I will just draw, I think, another little triangle for that. Um, 8 meters per second. So we've got the angle, but you've got... 20 degrees, that's 8, so the opposite length here, so it's opposite, so this is the bit that at the start of the gap notes you should be getting used to splitting into, so this opposite the angle should be 8 sine of 20, and this should be 8 cos of 20, so this is the, ver the initial vertical velocity and the initial horizontal velocity, if that's something you're not comfortable with and you've missed lessons, go back, have a look at that start bit, maybe um, look for something like that, kind of on that, but splitting into the vertical and horizontal components of the velocity. This is quite a long example, so I'm with extra bits that have been added. So this is from a te the textbook example, but this bit here underneath I think has been added in from another example. So I don't necessarily envisage man to get, managing to get all this in one example, um, but we'll see. So a stone is thrown, we've got that. Um, I'm going to take upwards positive, so it's thrown at an angle, but it's thrown kind of upwards. So upwards and I suppose right are my positive directions. And this is going to go kind of up and down. Now, with projectiles, it's all about understanding that we can look at the horizontal and the vertical components of everything the displacement slash distance, the acceleration, the velocity in separate parts. Now, with a projectile, throw at an angle, the only force that we look at acting on the particle on the stone is gravity downward. So I'm going to say that upwards is positive. So when I use the acceleration for the vertical velocity, I'm going to be using negative gravity, negative 9.8. There is no horizontal velocity. So the horizontal technically can be done as distance, speed, and time. You could also use the SUVAP, but just use A as zero. That is a personal preference, something you need to figure out for yourself what you're more comfortable with. Um, so the maximum height, the speed, the range. Okay, so what I'm going to do find first of all is I'm going to find the maximum height. Just double checking. So I want the max height. Now, from looking at things in the vertical plane in year 12, we should hopefully have an understanding that at its maximum, the velocity is instantaneously zero. So if we look vertically, in the vertical direction, taking upwards is positive, uh, and we look at the SUVAT variables, at the max height, the V should be zero. Okay, We're looking for the maximum height above the sea level. Okay, So we're going to have to include, after we've worked out what we're going to do, we're going to add 30 metres on right at the end of the question. We don't want to add it to our, our um, thing. Now what we're going to do is work out how high it's got on and then add the 30 to it because that 13 meters is nothing to do with the fact where it, where it starts okay it's going to travel up but we're going to add the 30 on afterwards so s is actually what we're looking for we need the initial velocity but we only want the vertical part of velocity which velocity which is the 8 sine 20 i think this can be the hardest thing to get your head around how we're working when we're doing things in projectiles it's similar to how we split the forces um, an acceleration of, for, uh, of, of kind of forces on slopes that we did at the end of last year or kind of middle end of last year um, and split in a similar kind of way like that. Vertically, so I'm taking upwards as positive, so I'm going to have minus 9.8 as my acceleration. The time at this point seems um, like useless information to me, so I'm not going to need that. I'm then going to make a what note of which formula I'm going to want, so it's the one ignoring t. It's this v squared by the looks of it equals u squared plus 2as. So I can say that 0 squared equals 8 sine 20 squared uh, plus 2 times negative 9.8s. Make it look different to my uh, 5, which often looks the same. So that'll mean this is going to give me... What I'm going to rearrange it. So that's going to be 0. I'm going to rearrange this and put this on the left. So it's going to be 9... 18, 19.6 right. so 19.6s is equal to 8 sine 20 squared I might be better off just leaving it as 8 sine 20 to be honest with you um, let's see what happens on my square I'm going to lose some accuracy aren't I yeah so I'll just leave that as 8 sine 20 squared 
and then I'm going to divide through by 19.6. I've squared that. I'm going to divide through by 19.6, and I'm going to get 0 0.38. So three, three significant figures, so 0 0.382 meters. Obviously, that seems quite a small number compared to 30 meters, but the 30 meters is kind of been made up arbitrarily, but it's nothing to do with how fast it's moving. So my max height, just to go back to the 30. Um, going to be 30 meters plus 0.382 which when I add it to it and then round again to three significant figures is going to give me 30.4 meters all right right can call for B so what is B so max height the speed that it hits the C okay so we speed okay is a um, is a combination, is a magnitude, a combination of the vertical and horizontal. Okay, so it's like a Pythagoras, if you will. So if you look back at this, the speed was 8, really. So that the other way of saying speed is m magnitude of the velocity. Um, but we normally use the word speed. So that's the horizontal uh, initial velocity, that's the vertical initial velocity, and that is the speed or magnitude of the velocity, if you will. So what we're going to need to work out is what what do we what information do we know about when it's going to hit the C? I'll think about the vertical first because the horizontal is actually quite easy. You may or may not work out why that is. So I'm going to again start as positive because that's kind of the way that the object is starting. This makes more sense in my head personally. So S. So do we know displacement from the start? So when it hits the C vertically, well, yes, the distance we don't know, but the displacement is it's going to have lost overall 30 meters of height. So the fact is it's going to be negative 30. So it's going to be really important that you understand your positive and negative directions really well, whether you take upwards or downwards is positive. Because my velocity originally is going upwards, I think it's easier to take that way. So yes, the distance is done more than 30 meters, but it's lost 30 meters of vertical height by the time it gets to the C compared to the start. U is the same, it's 8 sine of 20. V is what we're looking for, so we want the velocity. A is the same, negative 9.8, and again T is going to be we're not, something we're not interested in, so it looks like we're going back to the same formula as before here, but looking for a different unknown. So we V this time we don't know, so that's good because we'd have to rearrange, we just get the answer popping out. So 8 sine 20 again squared plus two lots of negative 30 and negative 9.8. Yes, they're both minus. Yes, it can make a positive, but please make sure you are using the right signs. I know in some of the times some people ignore this idea of the negative and negative, but it is very, very important. Okay, so I'll type this in my calculator. I'll write it down and then I'll square root it. In fact, just to save a bit of room, I'm going to square root it and just put that one negative. So, Let's type this in my calculator and I'll explain what I'm doing. So 8 sine 20 all squared plus 2 times negative 30 times negative 9.8. That gives me 595.5. I'm going to square root it. I'd normally write this down, I just lack a bit of space. So that is 24.40 meters per second. Now because it's on its way down at this point, I said upwards is positive. So it's downwards, it's negative 24.40, the velocity technically. Now the horizontal velocity, so that's vertical, so horizontally the velocity is, so you could say for example, and this is from notation you'll see quite a lot, that's v of y, the velocity of the y direction, this is the velocity of the x direction, the velocity of the x direction is 8 cos 20. So I mentioned at the start, the horizontal velocity doesn't change, or I didn't, I said that there's no horizontal acceleration, so we assume all things like wind and air resistance are not part of it, it just makes it a lot easier to do these types of questions in what we call a modelling assumption, okay, so that, that is still 8 cos 20. So overall, to do the speed, we need the two velocities, and we need to do Pythagoras. Now I'm going to go as accurate as I can with my diagram, so 8 cos 20 is 7.5 one so that's it's a smaller number than 24 so it's gone it's going 
And if you're going to draw a triangle, always go horizontal first. It just makes everything make a bit more sense. So let's say that's 8 cos 20. It's about 7.5. And then it's going a significant amount quicker downwards, 24.4. No negative because the downwards direction shows it's negative. And the length of that is my overall speed. Okay? So my speed is equal to the square root of 8 cos 20 squared which will be the horizontal velocity the whole way along plus 24.4 squared which I've put in my calculator in one step 8 cos 20 in a bracket all squared plus in fact I think my if the previous answer is still stored you can use that 24.4 but it's 24.40 anyway squared and that gives me a speed of 25.5 three significant figures meters per second checked in the textbook is correct uh, so that's A and B so we've got find the maximum height find the speed and the range so I'll do the range I'll see if I can wang it in this little space in the corner um, hence why everything's a little bit squashed the last thing I'd say about that part B is quite often with that speed they might also ask you for the direction which it's traveling at at that point so if it says the word direction it means what's the angle and if you've got a triangle drawn you can see that the angle should be kind of that projection angle there so the triangle and everything that goes with that if you draw it nice and accurately gives you a bit of an idea for example i can see that the 